take us. I hope you are do you all are doing well. Now we will be moving towards the third video lecture of this unit that is towards the quantum mechanical model. Before going to that, let's see this question. This is yesterday's question. I hope you have tried this. If not, then we'll see how to solve this. What is the question? The energy gap between two energy levels is 2.3 electron volt. So energy gap between two levels is 2.3 electron volt. Delta E is equals to 2.3 electron volt. And when atom makes a transition makes a transition from higher to lower energy level, then what is the frequency? The frequency has been frequency is denoted by the frequency has been asked. Now it is given in electron volt. So at first, what I should know that unit conversion for energy. Unit conversions of energy. This you have already this you already know, but let me quickly write here first. If I say talk about one joule, then it will be equals to what? One kilogram meter square per second square. Or I can write one joule is equals to ten raised to 7 10 raised to 7 ergs so joule to kilogram meter square per second and joule to ergs second 1 calories is equals to 4.184 joule this also you know next electron volt or I can say 1 joule is equals to 6.24 into 10 raised to the power 18 electron volt and obviously 1 kilo joule is equals to 1000 joule this you must this unit conversions you must remember because we are dealing with energy and energy has has this units now according to the formula delta e is equals to h nu so nu is equals to delta e upon h so this implies nu is equals to delta e is 2.3 electron volt divided by what is the value of h value of h is 6.626 into 10 raised to power 34 10 raised to power minus 34 joule second so here energy is in electron volt and here energy is in joule so i have to convert the electro either you convert electron volt to joule or you convert joule into electron volt so i will convert this what i know that electron volt now electron volt comes over here in this unit conversion that means what 1 joule equals to 6.24 into 10 raised to 18 electron volt right so i can say that or if i write this as 2.3 multiplied by 6.24 into 10 raised to power minus 18 joules divided by 6.626 into 10 raised to power minus 34 joule second as you can see this joule joule will conserve out and the answer will be in second inverse now how I, how I have this value as I know 1 joule equals to 
6.24 into 10 is to 18 electron volt. So, one electron volt will be 6.24 into 10 is to minus 18 electron volt. You calculate this and what I have calculated, I got the answer as 2.16 into 10 raised to power minus, sorry, 10 is to power plus 16 second order in this. You calculate this and you verify this answer. If I am wrong, then let me know in the comment down below. So, this was yesterday's question. Now, moving on. So, yesterday, I told that we, today we will be starting with the quantum mechanical model or I can say we will move towards the quantum mechanical model or towards the quantum mechanics. Yesterday we saw what is classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. Today let me elaborate some few things about classical mechanics. So, some facts and ideas. First, molecular nature of matter is studied through quantum mechanics. Molecular nature of a matter is studied through quantum mechanics. Okay. Classical, now what is classical mechanics? Classical mechanics is a historical precursor for quantum mechanics. In this theory, state of system is specified by giving values of coordinates and velocities. Okay, we will see. Next, classical mechanics accurately describes the motion of objects of large mass. Yes, this is a of motion of object of large mass. That means what classical mechanics or classical theory deals with macroscopic properties of matter large mass and are moving at a speed much slower than the speed of light speed of light you all know so much much slower than the speed of light objects are moving much slower than the speed of light fourth classical mechanics ascribes exact trajectories of particles it also includes the newtonian laws that is first law second law and third laws of motion newtonian mechanics next we saw some brief introduction about this in the yesterday's video lecture that planck's planck's black body radiation theory einstein's photoelectric effect and bohr theory of bohr's model for hydrogen atom all comes into the old quantum theory or i can say classical mechanics old quantum theory contained quantization as hypothesis so if there was quantization of energy that is what as a hypothesis next old quantum theory have sub superseded by quantum mechanics so from classical towards quantum from classical towards quantum you will see the comparison of classical mechanics and quantum mechanics in next slides but for time being classical mechanics is what it is the behavioral study or I can say the study of matter at a microscopic scale. Then it is classical mechanics. If it is at microscopic scale, then it will be quantum mechanics. Now before going to quantum mechanics, let me first talk about a wave. This you already know, but we will just discuss it. What is a wave? Oscillating displacement. Okay, Ox oscillating displacement that depends on the position and time. Fine. Waves are described in classical mechanics as sound waves or waves on the surface of or the body of water. Next, vibration of a string. Okay, so first is on the surface of the water and second is vibration on the string in the musical instruments. In a water, the displacement is the distance to a point on its surface from its equilibrium position and in the sound wave the displacement here and the sound wave in the sound wave the displacement is difference between the pressure and its equilibrium volume okay. a region of this we already know but let me draw it a wave is like this fine so this is the region of positive amplitudes the positive displacements are called as crests okay and regions of regions of negative displacement are called as troughs this maximum is amplitude and displacement zero is yes and wherever the displacement is zero like at this position this position the wave is intersecting the axis or i can say the displacement is zero that is called as a node 
right a location where the displacement of the wave here location of the displacement of wave zero is called as a node and the distance from one case to another is called as a wavelength obviously if one if i want to find the distance of these two crests or trefts truff, this is called as wavelength lambda now the period tau is the wave time next it is the wavelength it is the it was the wavelength now the period period tau of wave is the time for the first return of the oscillation object to the to an initial state and the frequency is the reciprocal of the time period time period is nothing but the oscillate oscillation number of oscillations that are occurring and the reciprocal of it is what frequency or i can say number of oscillations per second now here you can see there are two waves first so let me classify first is traveling And second is standing wave. Now let's talk about traveling wave first. Traveling wave moves along. It moves along in the distance, like a surface, like on a surface of water. This is water, and this is the surface. So traveling waves moves along the surface like the waves on the body on water traveling waves also moves without changing shape it also moves without changing the shape as you can see there are see there are four kinds of four kinds of waves over here. First, let me classify as A, second, third, and fourth. A, B, C, D. Obviously, all the waves are different. But if you see the shapes of all the waves, you will see that yes, the shapes are same throughout the axis or throughout its propagation time the shapes of the waves are same so it moves without changing the shape if i talk about standing waves then it what are standing waves standing waves are nothing but the vibrations of a string or a guitar vibrations of a string in a musical instrument these, these represent the standing waves it doesn't propagates it doesn't propagate as you can see it has nodes see all are having nodes or i can say they have stationary nodes nodes are what where the displacement is zero the point at which the displacement of the wave is zero but here in the traveling wave you can see the nodes are not fixed one node is over here second node is here third is here and fourth is here so nodes are not fixed but in stationary wave or standing waves the nodes are fixed so they can also be considered as traveling wave is considered as non-stationary wave and standing waves are called also called as stationary waves non-stationary waves and stationary waves one more thing i want to make it clear in standing waves that the, the wave oscillates between two stationary nodes but here in case of traveling wave the, as the nodes are not fixed so we can't predict anything about it so this was about the waves that how waves are and waves are of two types traveling wave and standing waves moving on to the quantum theory we first discuss the classical theory now moving on to the quantum theory now what is quantum mechanics as we have seen in the classical mechanics that the classical mechanics deals with what deals with micro microscopic particles here it deals with microscopic particles it deals with microscopic particles now if i want to define quantum theory quantum mechanics what i can say 
quantum mechanics is the study of describing explaining and predicting behavior of matter at atomic and molecular level obviously microscopic means at atomic and molecular level behavioral study of matter at atomic and molecular level dynamics of matter at microscopic scale or i can say dynamics of matter at a microscopic scale in quantum theory what we are going to see is these things matter waves de broglie then schrodinger waves equation schrodinger wave equation can be of two types time dependent and time independent it has two versions then postulates of quantum mechanics in that we will solve that schrodinger wave equation has solutions also so basically these are the core areas of quantum mechanics that we will see in this unit now let me tell you something more about quantum mechanics now why microscopic behavior microscopic is also good why microscopic behavior let me write an example if i take it if i take silica silica is what silica is sand if it is microscopic take silica and make elemental si 99.9% pure elemental si these are used in transitions chips your memory card sd card everything has silica so what i want to conclude that mat the properties of any material changes from macroscopic state to microscopic state let me take another example if you take inert material platinum it becomes catalyst at microscopic level so there are any so there are many more examples also you try and find it what are the examples that are there they change their property when they are transformed from microscopic to microscopic particle so quantum mechanics is what in quantum mechanics what we do in classical mechanics it is a newtonian mechanics there are certain things certain uh, newtonian uh, rules and uh, straight away there are some formulas in which we find the value of the observables but in quantum mechanics the procedure is different let me first compare the classical mechanics and the quantum mechanics then we will go to the properties of quantum mechanics so this is an analogy from marvel that here this is classical mechanics it is quantum mechanics first let's talk about classical mechanics classical mechanics is what study of matter at microscopic level okay as you can see this is big and this is small so classical mechanics is the study of matter at microscopic level it is visible world and here it is invisible world classical theory is well packaged theory like newtonian mechanics maxwell's electrodynamics einstein's Einstein's relativity. So there are formula to determine the value of observables of classical mechanics for every type of motion. There are C. Yesterday we also saw there are straightaway formulas to determine the value of observables. Observable what now? What are observables? It can be kinetic energy. It can be potential energy. Or any or it can be momentum. so these are observables for defining them there are straight away simple formulas so you can put the value in the formula and get the answer so this was about classical mechanics but in quantum mechanics it is a totally different thing it is an invisible world 
and it deals with the microscopic particle why now why an this analogy is used because that this mark l is made from nano that's why to for the ease of remembering this quantum mechanics deals with the microscopic scale then it is an invisible world now theory is based on assumptions called as postulates we will discuss all the postulates one by one so this quantum theory is based on the postulates now here's the thing the postulates are unproven yes though the postulates are unproven they are accepted why because the experimental results matches with the postulates so the postulates are so true that their acceptance are evident by the experimental studies example de broglie and schrodinger wave equation will be seeing this in a while now what we do in quantum mechanics see observables you know what are observables kinetic energy potential energy momentum etc that can be determined by using see this is the thing interplay of wave function determined by wave equation and the operator defined for every observable is the core area of study quantum mechanics Now, what i want to say that there are wave functions determined by wave equation and the operator defined for every observable defined for every observable so there are let me draw it here what they want to say wave function wave function is denoted by generally psi wave function determined by this this wave function is determined by equation wave function this wave function is determined by equation there is an operator you will see what operators are there there is an operator which is operated on the observable and its value is found out so in quantum mechanics what we do there is an interplay of wave function determined by the wave equation because here the matter is classified as a wave and then the operator for every observable there is an operator that is in postulate of quantum mechanics that we will see in the postulates of it and the value of that observable is determined by operating that operator on the variable so that value is determined that is what we do in the quantum mechanical part now there are three motions if i come back to this there are three motions three or four motion first is translational motion so for a translational motion in quantum mechanics there is a model that is denoted by particle in a box there is vibrational motion for that the model is harmonic oscillator then let me just erase this then it was vibrational motion then electronic motion for here the model is hydrogen atom and what is left rotational motion so for rotational motion there is rigid rotor rigid rotor so 
in quantum mechanics we is to find the values of vibrational motion or translation to study the translation motion vibrational motion electronic motion and rotational motion there are some models in classical mechanics there are simple formulas but here there are certain models so you have to study that models and you have to find the value of observables observables like kinetic energy potential energy etc so you find that observables this was a brief introduction about the quantum theory or how quantum mechanics is studied next now this is leading towards the quantum theory or quantum mechanics first as you can see d broglie he was a college graduate student phd student and he was trying to find the justification for the bohr's hypothesis of quantization in the last if you don't know quantization then go to to the last video lecture we have seen what is the quantization of energy is so in that what he found that there are matter waves now what are what matter matter you already know so matter can exist as wave also he called it as that as matter waves like this so he thought there are fictitious waves there was no evidence about this but he thought that yes there are matter waves as to justify the bohr's hypothesis of quantization so what in the next slide as you can see the first according to the einstein theory of relativity the particle of the energy the energy of a particle is given by e equal to mc square now if you apply that mc square mc square is what mass and c is the speed of light so energy if you replace mc by the moment of p c is the speed of light or velocity of light change the the equation will become what e equal to mc like this so by mathematical manipulation you will get lambda equals to h upon p now lambda is the wavelength h is planck's constant you already know six value of planck's constant now de broglie deduced the velocity accompanying a particle that was same is applied to the particle of mass m if you write lambda equals to h upon p where p is the momentum so p equals to mv and in the bohr's hypothesis mv are equals to mv are for used to be in bohr's hypothesis mv are equals to n h upon 2 pi this was in the bohr's hypothesis so he equated that equation and he found that he see both are similar both are similar hypothesis of bohr so de broglie had shown that it was not necessary to assume quantization in hydrogen atom as a hypothesis not impossible it is not necessary it was not necessary to assume quantization in the hydrogen atom as a hypothesis if one assumes the matter wave relation 5.1.3 this relation if one is assumes that matter wave relation for the motion of an electron so this was the beginning of quantum mechanics that's why it was revolutionary what he told that the hypothesis is not required if you assume the electrons as a matter wave now how does the matter wave looks like it looks like this de broglie assumed this is the matter wave but as in the next diagram you can see here it is an integral multiple integral multiple means what value of integral multiple of wavelength at the on the circumference but in the next figure you can see that sometimes there is a mismatch and it usually was not an integral multiple of wavelength on the circumference then how to solve this during his phd he presented his dissertation containing his proposal that this proposal he wrote in his dissertation means for in his phd thesis but the committee was refused to believe that it correspond to the physical reality so, so the 
committee was not accepting that this is true in the physical reality. The wave nature of the ordinary object is not observable because of small wavelengths that occur. Ordinary objects, ordinary objects, ordinary objects, yes, ordinary objects, wave nature. Wave nature of ordinary objects is not observable. Then which are the objects that can show you the wave nature? And that two, the wavelength is in the range of that light. This is the answer. So the, again the same question. Can a matter wave be observed for a baseball or for a human? This is the question. Yes, matter wave does exist. But do they exist for a baseball? Baseball is a, I am talking about microscopic. Do they exist for microscopic particles? Or they only exist for microscopic particles? That was the question. So how to solve this? This can be proved by this example. See, calculate the de Broglie wavelength. Calculate the de Broglie wavelength of baseball of mass 5.1 OZ is ounce and 95 thrown at a 95 miles per hour. So we know that lambda equals to H upon mv where h is Planck function 6.6 .6 into 10 is to power minus 34 joule second and 5.1 ounce multiplied by this is unit conversion lv lbs is in weight in pounds so this is nothing but unit conversion the so final you know you don't need to remember this because because it is british unit and it is in ounce and lbs if the question will come it will the units will be in kilogram only now lambda equals to h upon mv they have calculated by unit conversion and the final answer is this 1.4 1.1 into 10 raised to see this is important 1.1 10 raised to what minus 34 that means what it is very 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 small so the smallness of this value suggests that why matter waves is not observed for baseballs because wavelength is very small so for macroscopic particles it is not observed so it is only observed for microscopic particles so and this was true see the mass of electrons the mass of electron is more so small that the de broglie suggested his in in his final oral examination for his phd that electron diffraction may electron diffraction by crystals could verify his theory and luckily in 1927 division in german this you might have heard this in 11th 12th class physics division in german ex, german experiment they grew accidentally grew a crystal and they proved that yes the, the matter wave de broglie's matter waves does exist for microscopic particles so this was is proof that yes matter waves does exist for microscopic particles but not for macroscopic particles yes he proved this he made this uh, conclusion of matter waves in his phd research thesis moving on to the schrodinger's wave equation now before going to schrodinger's wave equation i want to focus on a small experiment that is Schrodinger's cat experiment or denoted by generally Schrodinger's cat. Let us first read what is written over here. Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment proposed by Schrodinger to illustrate the absurdity means what uniqueness or complexity of quantum mechanics. What he did, no cat is no kitty is harmed in this experiment. It is just a thought experiment. What he did, he took the cat and put it in the box this is the box this is cat box is obviously closed from the top and here he put a radioactive source radioactive source and here a radioactive counter to measure the radioactivity 
any radioactive counter to measure the radioactivity. So, what he is trying to do say that if you take the cat, put it in a box and close the box, in that, see, in that there is a cat in the box in which the radioactive source is there and a counter is also there. So there, and if the box is closed, then there are two possibilities, both existing at the same time. First possibility, the cat is dead. Second possibility, the cat is alive. So there are two possibilities, both at the same time, both at the same time, if the box is closed. But you, when the box is closed, when the box is closed, there are two possibilities, cat may be alive or it may be dead. But if you open the box, there is only one possibility. That cat is dead. Cat can be either alive or cat can be dead. So there are two possibilities when the box is closed and there is only one possibility when the box is open. So what he, he was trying to relate this with particles or quantum mechanics that if the box is closed, a particle can stay here, 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 here at any place. But if you measure or if you try to do any experiment and you measure the position of the particle, you will end up with only one result. Then the particle will be at any one position. But when the when you are not measuring, the particle can exist in any position. That was Schrodinger's cat experiment analogy with the absurdity of quantum mechanics. Moving on to the Schrodinger's wave equation. Now, what is Schrodinger's wave equation? Let me first read this. Schrodinger wave equation is nothing but it has in the, in his article he gave four equations. The first three was time independent and the one was time dependent. So let me first start with time independent equation Schrodinger wave equation. This is time independent Schrodinger wave equation minus h cut. Yes, this is what h cut. H cut. You know h cut is equal to h what two pi. H is Planck's constant. H cut is reduced Planck's constant. H cut is equal to H upon 2 pi. H cut square upon 2m. D square psi. This is psi. This is psi. Upon dx square plus this is v. V x psi. V is potential. And x is the direction. See, x is also there, x is also there, x is, x means what? That the wave is propagating along, that the wave is propagating along x direction. x is the direction and E is energy. So, is the wave function. Now, this whole, this, this part, this whole part can be written as, excluding this side can be written as h where h is equals to minus h cut square upon 2m d square upon dx square this is so the equation will take the form as h psi is e plus v psi is equals to e psi sorry here this will come at v x so i can write the equation as remove this h psi is equals to e psi where h is equals to this h is equals to minus h cut square upon 2m d by dx square plus vx and psi is what psi is the wave function of that wave this can be written like this and h is called as hamiltonian
operator which is called as hamiltonian operator now what is time independent if time will permit i will derive this schrodinger wave equation in the class itself if time will permit otherwise you have to remember this equation by heart time independent schrodinger wave equation what it tells that h psi is equals to e psi where h cap this is cap h cap is equals to minus h cut square upon 2m d square upon dx square plus vx now it is an operator operator is nothing that if you want to operator means for operator is the one entity which operates on any function Next, moving on towards the time dependent Schrodinger wave equation. There are th there were two equations: time independent Schrodinger wave equation and time dependent Schrodinger wave equation. Now, time dependent Schrodinger wave equation is what? It is one of the postulate. When I will discuss the postulate, then I will this will get more clear. What it tells: h psi is equal to i h cut d psi by dt, where i is a complex number iota, i is equals to under root minus i, and h is the operator same as in the time independent equation. now we are as we are talking about waves so what this psi psi is the time dependent wave function and repre represent the displacement of a de broglie wave as a function of position and time so i can say that psi is a function of position position let's say it is at x position and time so psi is a function of position and time in this chapter and next we will use this capital psi for time dependent wave equation this so this is a wave function for a wave we will see what wave functions are but for time being remember that psi is a wave function for a wave and there are two types of schrodinger wave equation time independent and time dependent now if i want to write the schrodinger wave equation in if i want to write the schrodinger wave equation in three dimension then what will happen see schrodinger wave equation was h psi equals to e psi here i can write h psi equals to h cap psi is equals to e psi this was schrodinger wave equation where h cut was what minus h cut square upon 2m d square by dx square plus vx so in that equation it was x but if there are three coordinates x y z in three dimension then the equation will change like this h cap is equals to minus h cut square d square upon dx square d square plus d square upon dy square plus d square upon dz square plus v x y z or i can write this whole complete thing as this this is laplacian operator this is d square upon dx square plus d square upon dy square plus d square upon dz square these are partial derivatives these are called as del del square upon del x square plus del square upon del y square plus del square upon del z square so this can be represented by this laplacian operator and the schrodinger wave equation in three dimension will become like this obviously psi will be there yes this is Lapl laplacian operator and laplacian operator is this so schrodinger wave equation can be for one dimension it can be for three dimension and it can be written for two dimension also in that you have to take any two coordinates the given coordinate x or y now moving on to the eigen value eigen functions and wave function this is important see there is an equation written over here a cap f n is equals to a n f n n is nothing but state in which state the 
equation or the particle lies. A is an operator and A small capital A is an operator and small a is a value. Now let, let's read this. The time independent Schrodinger equation belongs to a class of equations called as eigenvalue, called as eigenvalue equations. Eigenvalue equation. The word eigenvalue is a partial translation of German eigenword. A full translation is means what? These, this means characteristic value. Eigenvalue means what? Characteristic value. An eigenvalue equation has one on one side an operator operating on a function. I, this is what eigenvalue equation. This is eigenvalue equation. In eigenvalue equation on one side there is a constant eigenvalue multiplying the same function. Fn is function. So this is operator, this is function, this is eigen value, and this is the same function. So function is called as eigen function, and value is called as eigen value, and the equation is called as eigen value equation. So if I want to elaborate on this eigenvalue, then what I can say that eigenvalue or eigenvalue is nothing but it is a or eigenvalue equation. Eigenvalue equation is what? Has a it has a set of solutions. Solving eigenvalue equation, solving it. If I want, if I solve it, the eigenvalue equation, then obviously solutions will come out. That solution may satisfy the equation. That solutions may satisfy the equation and they give some values that values are called as eigenvalues now these eigenvalues belongs to eigenvalue equation so getting my word see what is an eigenvalue equation an eigenvalue equation is a equation which contains the eigenfunction and eigenvalues in which eigenvalue equation has a if you solve that equation they have some set of solutions and if you solve that eigenvalue equation you will get some set of solutions and that set of solutions must satisfy the equation and after satisfying the equation you will get some values they are called as eigenvalues and then all the set of eigenvalues belongs to the eigenvalue equation. If we will solve in some examples, it will get more clear. Now here, in eigenvalue equation, there was a word that is eigenfunction. Or in Schrodinger wave equation, there was psi function. So let us talk about that psi. What is a psi or what? Psi indicates because in Schrodinger wave equation, in what was the Schrodinger wave equation? Schrodinger wave equation was minus h cut square upon 2m d square upon dx square psi plus vx psi is equals to e psi. Now, this psi, what is this psi indicates and what is this psi? represents psi is called as a wave function it represents the wave now here let's start from here represented by a wave function position and time that means psi is a function of position let's say it is propagating in the x direction so this 
can be represented by this psi in subscript x and t position and time such that psi into c this is star psi star into psi will give you the probability will give you the probability of finding the particle at that position at that time now what is psi star that i will tell you in the postulates but what it tells that psi and psi star gives the probability of finding a particle at that position at that time next the wave equation is used in the uh, or, sorry the wave function is used in the schrodinger's wave equation the schrodinger equation plays the role of newton's laws and conservation of energy in classical mechanics it predicts the future behavior of a dynamic system it predicts now what schrodinger wave equation schrodinger wave equation it predicts analytically and precisely the probability of events or outcome yes the probability of events or outcome the detailed outcome depends on the chance but given a large number of events schrodinger wave equation will predict the distribution of results so schrodinger wave equation tells about the outcomes or it tells about the probability of find probability of finding the particle at a position and at a time that all information that can be obtained from schrodinger's wave equation and psi is what psi is a wave function which is a function of position and time and if you multiply psi into psi star it will give you the probability of finding the particle at that position here i can write psi star as conjugate what psi star is a complex conjugate this we will see what a complex conjugate is but psi multiplied by psi star will give you the probability to find a particle at a, any certain position and at a time now there are some properties that must be followed by the wave function now what are the property first it contains the all measurable information about the particle so first point tells that if you know the values of psi then it can tell you all the information about the particle at where the particle resides and what is the at what time the particle remains at that position that is all denoted or that is that all will be obtained from the psi next psi into psi star if some novel o all over places is equals to one this we will see in normalization constant second psi is continuous yes, this is important psi is continuous that means what now schrodinger wave equation is a differential equation Schrodinger wave equation is a differential equation. What differential equation means that for every differential equation there are some solutions. And these solutions must be continuous. So therefore, psi must be continuous. It also allows to calculate the energy energy of any state nth state energy of energy of any nth state can be calculated by knowing the psi by putting the values of that in the schrodinger wave equation next establishes the probability distribution three dimension that is also true next permits calculation of the effective average value or expectation value of a given value variable this is the thing variable means if you know the psi as in the quantum mechanics if you know the psi then you can find the value of observable observable means what energy kinetic energy or any momentum you can find the value of observable if you know psi so that means what psi must be finite it cannot be infinite 
so these are some properties of sine that you must remember it it is finite it is continued finite and also must be single value it cannot have multiple values these are the characteristics of wave function next for a free particle sine wave okay for a free particle sine wave implying the momentum this will see in heisenberg's uncertainty principle then we will again come to this this will see in heisenberg's uncertainty principle but these are the characteristics that you must remember for the wave function that what are the characteristics of wave function wave function is coming in the schrodinger wave equation it is continuous it is finite and it is single value these are the main major three characteristics that that must be followed by a wave function now what else can wave function can tell that was interpreted by max born this was the major breakthrough in the quantum mechanics now what he told the born it is called as born interpretation of the schrodinger wave equation born interpretation obviously he was uh, wor working with direct also schrodinger was working with direct also not bohr so what is bohr interpretation it is the interpretation of wave function states that the value of sin square sin square is probability density at any point is proportional to the probability of finding the particle at that point what is trying to say sin square modulus of sin square yes modulus of sin square is probability density which is proportional to the probability of finding a particle at that point if i want to represent it graphically then let us first understand the situation see wave function focuses on square of wave function or the square modulus this can also be called as square modulus but before it how it came to as we know that amplitude square is equals to intensity of light intensity of light in classical mechanics with the wave theory this is wave theory if you don't know this then it's fine if it it is wave theory wave theory means what it tells that the square of the amplitude is equals to the intensity of light that means intensity intensity is related to what photons h nu so if and photon is light light can exist as matter and wave also so amplitude square is equals to the intensity of light from this born interpreted that the wave function focuses on the square of wave function psi square is equals to psi star into psi if psi is complex complex means if if psi is a complex number it states that the value of psi square at any point is proportional to probab finding proportional to the probability of finding a particle in a region around that point for a one dimensional system in a one dimensional system let's take an example of a box if it, it is a one dimensional box and if i want to find the particle the probability of finding the particle at any point let's, let's say that this point is a then this a can be determined by psi square where psi square is equals to psi into psi star what does it means let me draw the represent the graphical representation is here let us focus on this see if a if a wave function of a particle has the value psi at some point x then the probability of finding the particle between x and x plus dx is proportional to sin square dx this is the wave nature this is dx this is x this point this point is x plus dx dx is the displacement or dx is this small region if you want to find the probability of particle being in this region then this can be 
calculated by psi square dx that's what is born interpretation born interpret again i'm repeating born interpretation came from the wave theory of light that amplitude square is equals to the intensity of light so intensity of light is related to photons so the square of psi is equals to the probability of finding a particle in a one dimensional specifically in a one dimensional box probability of finding a particle in a one dimensional box and that psi square is called as probability density moving on now we'll be moving to the push towards the postulates of quantum mechanics now why this because in the earlier slides what we saw that the quantum theory is based on assumptions and these assumptions are postulates and these postulates are not proven but these postulates are accepted and they are so correct that there is no question on their existence they are unquestionable so before going through the postulates let me read this first point quantum mechanics is based on the set of postulates or fundamental hypothesis second the first there are some postulates the first postul two postulate describes the role of wave equation in quantum mechanics produces wave equation the third postulate establishes connection between each mechanical variable and the mathematical operator fourth fourth postulate provides the means to obtain information about the values of mechanical variables and fifth postulate concerns determination of state of a system by experimental measurements reading this is tricky but when i will discuss the postulates one by one then this will get more clear so what i want to convey in this slide is that now we will be moving towards the postulates of quantum mechanics postulates are nothing they are simple assumptions and they are widely accepted because they are so true that there is no though there is no experimental evidence they are unquestionable and accepted in quantum mechanics now till now what we have discussed let me focus on that the important points that you need to remember first de broglie wavelength de broglie wavelength is this how it came it came from the assumptions of quantization that was made by bohr next we saw that what is schrodinger wave equation time dependent and time independent this is time independent schrodinger wave equation and this is time dependent schrodinger wave equation in which if i want to write h h is equals to minus h cut square upon 2m d upon del upon del x square plus vx this is hamiltonian operator h cap next hamiltonian operator so time dependent and time independent schrodinger wave equations and some more things we discussed today that what is psi second what is psi square psi square tells about the probability of finding a particle at a given time and at a given position this is called as probability density where psi has some characteristics like it must be finite continuous single valued etc and we saw what quantum mechanic what quantum mechanics is 
again i'm repeating classical mechanics is nothing you just have to put the formula and get the answer but in quantum mechanics the things are different you have to interplay with the wave function determined by the wave equation and the operator is defined for every observable so here there are wave function there are operators there are observables you have to interplay with them to find the value of observable and there are models for different motions translational there is particle in box model vibrational there is harmonic oscillator model electronic there is hydrogenic atom model and rotational motion there is a rigid rotor motion so this was a brief introduction about the quantum mechanics this is your question for today's class try to solve it stay home stay safe thanks for watching in the next class we'll move towards the postulates of quantum mechanics and we will arrive at the quantum numbers and the orbitals then we'll move to the shape of orbitals so in tomorrow's class we will move towards the postulates of quantum mechanics we will see what are the assumptions it's that are there in the quantum mechanics and one by one all the postulates we will see then we will move towards the quantum number how quantum numbers have been came from the Schrodinger wave equation and the shape of orbitals why the shape of orbitals are some specific why shape why the, there are some specific shapes that the orbitals do have